Sifa and Sola. Today is Monday, November 3rd, 2008, and here in the Emerald Isle, I hear that this show is becoming a threat to those with simple minds. Good morning, and welcome to Coffee Break. And for the record, <laughs> we will continue to stoke the fires and light those tires. First things first, Sola. Mm -hmm. It sounds like this talk show has become a matter of concern for the powers that be. Our little insignificant talk show? Is that possible? Not only is it possible, <clears throat> apparently the producer of Coffee Break has been warned through a third party. Warned through a third party? Warned about what? <clears throat> it's a talk show about rumors and hearsay, for goodness sake. Yeah. I almost want to consider whether there is more truth than normal to the rumors of Montserrat. How else could this show be a threat? <laughs> I must admit up front, you know, mm -hmm. that I would be blown away if some genius of an individual shows up with public and publicly announces <laughs> that he or she, you know, has an issue with something that was said here on Coffee Break. You know, there is no name calling here. We just stick to the hearsay and that's it. I mean, confessions are okay, mm -hmm. but the person should be functional enough to realize the difference between a confession, <laughs> an accusation, an opinion, and a statement. Well she said. <laughs> What's even more funny is what the message actually said. The producer of this show has been in Montserrat for over eight years now and has been declined for just about every job she applied for. With all this free time, the Coffee Break talk show was created. Now the word is that the producer of this show should stop production if she wants to be considered for a job in the government. What? And the messenger wasn't shot? <laughs> <laughs> How did the producer respond to this? Book? Good question. I was extremely taken for a loop when the producer broke out in an epileptic fit of laughter. Mm? It seems she found the whole thing hilarious. Hilarious? That's not what I was expecting to hear. I know, you're not alone. Mm -hmm. Anyone who knows the producer of this show personally will feel the same way. Passi passivity, mildness, and tolerance are not the norm when our producer is confronted. We yeah, no. <laughs> So what exactly was the message to the producer of Coffee Break? Well, as I hear it, the producer was told that if she wanted to be considered for a job by the government of Montserrat, in the government of Montserrat, mm -hmm. she must cease production of the show immediately and stop cussing the government and stop cussing the police. Mm -hmm. Well, consideration? Yes, that is. Cease immediately? Mm -hmm. Well, stop cussing? Yes. What kind of message is that? They consider her for a job every time she applies for one. It's been over eight years now. And with all their considerations, you understand me? Before this talk show, she received no offers. Okay, all right. So, as I see it, a real negotiator would have the common sense to know that someone with the skills to produce a show, like Coffee Break, man, <laughs> They need more than an offer of consideration to think about stopping Coffee Break, a show that is turning out to be, might I say, mm -hmm. more popular than local politicians. Mm -hmm. Well, if they really paid attention to the producer over the past eight years, they would know that a person with the kind of skills our producer has would only consider a lucrative and concrete offer. You know, I think I can safely say she has she is way past consideration. Mm -hmm. Before the government's consideration, she has survived. So why would their consideration not make any difference? Mm -hmm. You would have to make a point of asking the government that one. I suspect the producer doesn't intend to waste very much time considering their consideration. <laughs> I wonder if they consider that. <laughs> <laughs> well, if they haven't, this show is certainly a big clue, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Maybe, or maybe not. <laughs> it's hard to tell with my right not much, you know. Mm -hmm. This country is full to the brim of natural geniuses. Mm -hmm. I know, that's right. On to the business at hand. Have you heard that the newly stuck barge is now waiting for rescue? This could never be for real. Mm -hmm. Another stuck barge? It's almost as if they've got some kind of curse when it mm -hmm. comes to barges in Montserrat Harbour. 
Um, and it took them over two years accounting to get rid of the last one that got stuck. You know? Okay, yeah. That reminds me of um, the voice of one of my favorite Calypso songs, right? Mm -hmm. It goes something like this. No accountability or transparency. Them just can't seem to see the right priorities. Mm -hmm. Look how long the badge has sit till we have rusty fish. It seems now we're going to have more than rusty fish. If you don't look sharp, when people go swimming, they're coming up with rusty hips. <laughs> <laughs> Talking about rusting. I hear that there is a strong possibility that a former teacher and a local entertainment personality might rust in jail for having sex with a minor. They say a DNA test call out their names loud and clear. You see, for mm -hmm. might. Mm -hmm. Might is the key word. Mm -hmm. You're talking about rusting. Mm -hmm. Maybe they won't even make it to jail. So, lady, right, you know? This could be another one of those magical mantra moments that no one seems to be able to explain. Talking about magical, have you heard about some boat that washes up ashore with dead bodies? What? what are you talking about? Yeah, yes, yeah, so I know the radio about, about that, you know. I don't, I ain't really catch it all, you know, because they are pieces. Mm -hmm. I hear something about dead people are washing ashore. I didn't know where, but some people here must right, seem to think it was too misinformation. If it's mantra, the bodies wash up and I feel sorry for the families. Sorry, because <laughs> this one might be several skill levels over the mantra for these heads, okay? Now the police have another set of dead bodies to deal with, but at least the murderer of the man they found chopped up in St. Peter's already confessed. So that should take a load off. By the way, if it's the two fishermen, right? Why the boat take years to wash up 28 miles down the road? <coughs> It looks like must start really getting bad for you. First, mm -hmm. people getting thrown down toilet pits, and now people getting chopped up. That's right. So, for you, Manchurians living abroad, including the illegal ones, mm -hmm. you should keep that in mind as you continue to live and turn your backs on your own homeland. That's right. Remember that Manchurians has become more of a stranger's paradise every day. So, for those of you who have lost your way, Stay up to date with us here on Coffee, Coffee Break. Break.